Okay. We just got done DA on the whole car with 80 grit DA paper. The next thing we're going to do is take it in the paint booth. Man, the body shop girl's going to put a quick take, uh, take job off on it. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, hold on. Here's a spot right here. I forgot to get this. Look at that right there. Oh, you missed a spot. <laughs> So then once Minnie gets it over into the paint booth, we're going to go ahead and take this baby off and we're going to go ahead and put our blue epoxy primer on this and I think it's going to look pretty awesome. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Because you know the guy doesn't have a lot of money. He can't afford to paint it for probably five, six years. So I figure, what the hell? He wants it blue. We're going to go ahead. And, you know, this is kind of like the factory color blue that we're going to put on it, except it's epoxy primer. Save the car. It's not. Rusty. It's not uh, uh, midnight dark blue like he wants, but it is blue. You see what I'm saying? I hear it. So I think it's really going to look good, and uh, we haven't done any body work on it. You know, he can't afford all that right now. I can't afford to take my time and do it. So let's go look at the epoxy primer. Let me show what you, you think. Tell me. All right, so you know the factory blue back then. It was kind of a seafoam looking real metallic blue. So I tried to match that color. Let's see what came out. And hopefully it kind of looks like it. We'll get your angle on it. Um, it's going to look a little bit lighter when it's wet than it does when it's dry. Now, I did uh, take a half a quart of dark blue in case we want to tone it down make it darker but I think this is going to work out just right what are you thinking? That looks think? good. Huh? Let's look at it outside. I like it. Now of course this is uh, wet and if we flip it over okay that's dry so it does it does tone down a little bit and gets a little darker when it dries but uh, what are you thinking? I think it looks a lot like that color that they I have. I think it looks like that color. There's I think we're no gonna... metallic in it, that's all. There you go, buddy. And it'll be kind of flat. It's going to be semi-gloss flat. So I'm going to go ahead and put probably two to three full wet coats of primer on it. Um, I'm going to add my 10% reducer to it. That's going to make it flow out real good. And when we come back, it's going to be blue. I think it's going to look nice, Norm. I do. Where's your car, Norm? Sitting in my garage. I drive it, Pete. Yeah, okay. I do. My ass. I do, at least once a week. <laughs> at least once a month. <laughs> no, at least once a week. Thought you were going to sell it. So I not, am. You're not selling it now? I don't have it for sale yet. Okay, let's go ahead and get our primer mixed up and get down the road with this, and hopefully everything's going to work out. Take a good look at it, Norm. It's going to look different when we're done. All right, let me check it out. You didn't feather out all the chips and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what's this big old line back here where you had to change the rear quarter? Yeah, well, you should have done at least some light, light body work on oh, it. Oh man. No. Well, I, I think I think Matt's gonna be real happy with it. Just the fact that he's gonna finally get to drive it is a huge thing. That is after he gets some tires and glass and bumpers and. A few other things. Turn signals. Seat. <laughs> well, we definitely ain't gonna drive it with no tires. Yeah. He might. Not for very long. Those babies are rotted. 
I was surprised that little burnout I did didn't pop the tire. Is it pretty quick? Yeah, you can squeal the tires real easy. Let me tell you something, Norman. When I get the seats bolted in there, I'm going to take you for a little ride, buddy. I wouldn't All right. go. All right, there you go. Let's get this thing painted. All right. stripe on the car. Awesome. Because if you have an SS Chevelle, especially with an LS2, you gotta have a racing stripe. It definitely isn't gonna be a sleeper. Now the good thing about doing this is that you know rat rods are popular items, right? Oh yeah. So when this epoxy primer starts wearing down, does that look the same? Yeah. So when the epoxy primer starts to wear down, okay, what do you think? Think we have to put that on there? Custom yeah. race stripe. I think it would be cool. Yeah. But this one here is not on there right now. What I'm doing is I'm finding that shadow. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on here and... Is that on the inside or the outside of that body line? What are you talking about? It's right on the body line. Oh. Uh, well, my eyes are hard. It's hard on my eyes to tell. I can't tell. Then we're going to go over here. Uh-huh. Okay, I know where I 
over here like this. We're gonna follow that line. Okay, so now we got the front and the back, now we got to get the middle, see? So we got to come over here like this. We're going to start our turn in the center. It's a lot of work for a rat rod paint job. See how I just did that? Now that looks too round. See how this one looks square, that one looks round? So we got to start over. Sharper. Like this right here. There we go. How's that? That's better. See the stripes are gonna go in the middle of this. See what I'm saying? So then we got the this corner here. We're gonna come down here like this. Cut this right here and roll it around. Well, should be able to roll it here, but okay, that one looks good. Let's go ahead and get this other corner. There. I'm kind of fucking us up there, see? What's the problem? What, are you lost or something on it? No, I'm just a camera girl, man. So, anyway, what we're doing here. Um, we're going to go ahead and take some black epoxy. We're going to put some racing stripes down the hood. And then if you come back here, this is a real famous thing to do on these SS's, is we're going to put a blackout panel right here. Okay? You see what I'm saying? Once that's done, then uh, I think it'll be hot rod ready. Let us finish this out. We're going to come back and look at this thing. You can kind of get a gander at it and see that it came out really good uh, for shooting epoxy primer on it. And another thing is that we tinted our primer. That's the main thing about this video, is that we tinted our primer, and look how smooth it came out. It flowed out really nice. Everything's got a nice semi-gloss to it. And I applied three coats of epoxy primer. I made sure that I used my hardener with it, and it really came out nice. So. Let me finish this up. We're going to come back, look at it with the stripes, taking all the paper off and everything else, and see how our uh, tinted epoxy primer job ended up. The moment's come where we finally got the Chevelle 90% back together and I'm going to be honest with you, this thing looks pretty badass. Uh, using the epoxy primer as a paint coat really, really did the trick on this thing and I mean it really brought it out to be a sleeper of a muscle car instead of a uh, full-blown street rod, you know, I'm going to kick your ass in a race type situation. Uh, once again, we didn't do any body work to it. You can see where we showed the welds right here you can see the welds in it and you can see the rust patch right in here and the quarter panel was replaced right in here and all this rear section of the car has been replaced on it but let me tell you what using the epoxy primer tinting it with high quality toners has really given this car the magnitude of saying this is 
a show car rat rod right here. Let's take a look on the inside. I went ahead and installed some late model, I believe they were Mitsubishi Eclipse seats. You can see them right there. Those really came out good. I like those. Uh, it's got the removal headrest if you want to give it that classic low back seat look. Um, I went ahead and made this center console for him. This is a custom made fiberglass center console which uh, takes the uh, late model Camaro shifter which we need in this because I don't know if I told everybody but this is a, a 6.2 liter L9H LS2 big boy engine. Let's take a look at that. So if we look under the hood you can see what kind of job we're talking here. This is an L9H big this L9H I'm sorry I was going to say big block L9H one more time. 6.2 liter small block 350 LS2 fuel injection conversion. And let me tell you something, it's got some hellacious horsepower going on here. You barely touch the gas on this thing and it is gone. But the real deal on this video is using the epoxy primer and doing it the proper way. So I hope you like this video set and I hope that it helped you out by choosing Another option besides restoring the car and spending thousands and thousands of dollars right now. You see what I mean? We used the epoxy primer, we went ahead and we sealed the car. The car will never rust. It was stripped down to bare metal pretty much. Uh, I believe the doors and the front end, but the main body of the car was stripped to bare metal. We took care of all that problem. We went ahead and epoxy primed it and it is now ready for the owner to enjoy and have fun with it without spending another $10,000 in rubber accessories, uh, door seals, you know, brand new chrome, all this other shit. Now he did buy some new chrome bumpers, but as you can see that the old chrome, by using the old chrome with the epoxy primer, just fits right in with this situation. Uh, this is some old chrome right here. Um, and he's got the chrome he's going to put on at home there. We went ahead and installed this little trick right here, put it back on the door, and it really came out nice. So, let's go look at our uh, Carmen Ghia and see how that came out, because we did basically the same thing to that, and see what we got. So here's our red epoxy primed, same situation. We de it down with 80 grit. We, took, we put two full wet thick coats of epoxy primer using our hardener in the primer and also tinting it with high quality toners such as PPG brand. Came out awesome, I like it. Uh, this car here is to restore this vehicle, I'm gonna let you know it would cost $20,000. This car has major rust on it. Both floor pans need replaced. Both inner rockers are rotted out. So this car right here, I think that it really looks good. I'm very happy with it. We took this car, we did a guy a square deal. Minimal, minimal money and got it done for him. And he is now gonna take it home, put all his bumpers and all his stuff back on it and enjoy having this car to drive. Just another example, if you wanna save money and you want something nice and high quality, this is a way to do it right here. So this is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. A very, very long, extensive video set. Um, this little video set actually took a couple months to film uh, because we were waiting on parts for our Chevelle and we had to get the Carmen Ghia over here and all that. So I hope that uh, all this video footage that I am supplying to you on YouTube, on DIY Auto School and SWRNC, that's YouTube channel SWRNC, is helping you and guiding you through steps and procedures of something that you want to do in life. And the real message that I try to get across to everybody is that when you start something, you should finish it. Uh, accomplishing something doesn't mean that you start it and say, well, fuck it, okay, it's done now, I'm not finishing it. 
It's starting some and promising somebody that you're gonna do it and following through with what you do. And the main person that you promise is yourself. Yourself is the one that counts more than anybody else. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Hotter than hell in Texas, sweating like a pig, and uh, working long fucking hours. We gotta go, take it easy. Here's another car we're gonna be getting rid of this weekend. Let's go ahead and look at that. As we say goodbye to our 1966 LS2 Chevelle, down the road it goes, and to a very, very good and faithful and wanting owner that has owned this car since he was 16 years old. He's now 40, I think he said he's just turned 40 or 42 or something, and well deserved. Worked his ass off, saved his pennies, saved his dollars, and it now is ready to go home to be with him. And then of course we got the Street Beast kit car. Um, I got to do a little bit of detailing on that. We'll be finishing up the week over here, getting this baby ready to send to the owner up in Canada. Beautiful car. Um, I wish we would have had a chance to go ahead and finish it out for the owner as far as the interior goes, but we don't have interior people anymore. And he's gonna have to take care of that himself. Make sure you look for the big walk around on this thing. Uh, beautiful car and watch all the videos on YouTube channel SWRNC that's SWRNC of what it took to build this car and all the hard labor work that we put into it to make it what it is now we'll see you later and have a great good day great day and God bless everybody watching this video and good luck with all your projects that you have to finish or start All right, um, we're talking about using epoxy primer. We're talking about using toners to tint the epoxy primer. Let's go ahead and see what we got in the box here because we're actually doing another car in epoxy primer that we had tinted red. All right, John, we got our buddy John, VW John with us. Now we're doing a Carmen Ghia, and this Carmen Ghia has got a lot of body work on it. Am I right? Got a lot of bondo. A lot of bondo. A lot of body work. A lot of bondo. A lot of these Carmen Gears, and I'd say 95% of them are bondo buggies. Am I correct? Probably higher than that. Yeah, probably 98% of them. But uh, the owner, VW Don, is giving this car to his grandson, and he wanted to go through the procedure of restoring it and making a brand. I said, look, dude, you don't want to do that. Give him a rat rod. Let him have fun in it. He's probably gonna wreck it again because the reason it was here anyway is because he wrecked it. And if we look right here, you can see where he wrecked it. Uh, this is actually a front end that Don picked up in Florida. Paid $900 for the whole front end. And it was well worth it because Don actually needed that part of the fender over there, replaced it. But when his son wrecked it, you can see what happened here. We had to replace the headlight bucket on the car. Now, we're not doing any body work to this thing. I'm sorry, we're looking at the wrong thing. This is the thing we're talking about. If you look real close, you can see there's a lot of Bondo in this car. This is where I actually pulled some dents out, and I had to grind through Bondo to do it. So uh, this is a Bondo buggy. This is your typical car again. Now, what makes this car again worth the money and worth the, the flip of a bill is that it is a convertible top. It's a convertible car again, but it needs a lot of work. So if we look right here, this is where I replaced the headlight bucket right there. We're not going to do the body work to that area. This is going to be a Frankenstein rat rod, uh, basically like the blue Chevelle that we're going to be looking at in this little video series. But we're doing the same thing to this car as we are did to the Chevelle. We're going to go ahead and paint this with epoxy primer using our toner to mix the paint with to give it a rat rod semi-gloss look. What do you think about that idea? Cheap, inexpensive, get it out of the way, and it's a nice all one color deal. And it'll last many years. Not my first choice. Okay, so you would actually spend the thousands, hundreds, and thousands of dollars it would take to completely restore the car and never drive it. Because that's what we're looking at. You know how these cars are, bud. Right. Okay, people restore these things and then they don't want to drive them because they got brand new floor pans, brand new engines, brand new interiors, and the next thing you know, they become trailer queens and garage kings. This is probably too far gone to restore. This is probably too far gone 
uh, and the best thing for this thing to do, uh, you can see where I replaced this panel and I actually stopped over here. And the reason we stopped is because uh, underneath and behind all that, it's all rotted out. I mean, it's going to have to be cut off and replaced. You can't see it under the paint, but the underside of this and the inside of it is just completely shot. If you look real close into this corner in here, I don't even know if you can see it, but both corners of the inner fender wells is rotted out right into the uh, uh, what are we, the rocker, inner rockers where the heater boxes are. So this car would need a lot of attention to really restore it. And, and another thing we got on this, John, is that it becomes a domino effect. Where do you stop? That's right. You know, don't you have a car, McGee? What year is yours, bud? 63. Yours is 63, and you were very lucky to have a guy that did old school body work that didn't use any Bondo at all, hammer and dollied everything out. So your car McGee is one of that 2% in the world that's Bondo free, mint condition body. It also had no rust on it. And it had no rust, so. Anywhere. And yours is actually black. black Am I right? Black lacquer, right. Yeah, black lacquer on that. This car right here, I would presume this car's been painted at least two times, if not three times. The Bondo on this stretches all the way from this side all the way around, and I mean, it's just a big Bondo buggy, and this is the way that we should do this car. We put the red epoxy primer on it, we get her done, and I guarantee you, when you see this thing when we're done, you're going to say, wow, that, I didn't believe that it would look that good. Let me go get that mixed up, John. It's hot in here, bud. All right. So just like on the blue car, what we did is we went ahead and took our epoxy primer. Um, now on this particular primer here, being red instead of blue, uh, here's our blue right here, all right? And instead of, being, uh, instead of being blue, we went ahead and took one quart of gray and one quart of white, mixed it together. And what that did, that lightened up that gray primer. And then when we add the red to it, of course, it would uh, turn red a lot quicker because um, we don't want it uh, dark red, and then on the other hand, we don't want it to be um, pink. So we basically went through the same procedure, and I'm going to show you the color that we got. Now, this is the color right here. All right, that's the color we're looking at. And then when it's wet, it looks like that. So when it dries, it actually dries to two or three shades darker than what we're looking at. So I got my epoxy primer right here, I got my cups right here, and I got my hardener. Let me get this mixed up. We're going to go through the same thing that we did on the, the blue Chevelle. You saw what we did on the blue Chevelle. We're going to go ahead and paint the Carmageddon epoxy, and then we're going to take a look at both of these cars before and after, and I guarantee you, you're going to be amazed at what they look like and possibly going to give you an idea that you might want to do this to your car. We'll be back. got our buddy here with us, uh, VW Don, uh, Volkswagen Don, owns a 67, beautiful black Volkswagen bug. Um, he just got done picking up his car McGee, we just got done rat rodding it out with some epoxy primer red. He's also got his grandson here, and he's given his grandson this car, and uh, let's get with him and see what he thinks about the car, and hopefully he's going to enjoy riding the car that Grandpa gave him. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? All right, how you doing today? Well. That's a hell of a hairdo you got going, bro. Thank you. Does that thing fit inside the car when you drive it, or you got to put the top down for that? The, we got to keep the top down. <laughs> got to keep the top down on that hairdo, huh? Elvis Presley or what? Yeah. There you go. Going with the afro. I hear that, bro. So what are you thinking, bud? I think it looks great. You think you like it or what? Yeah. Stand over here by the car, dude. There you go. We got 18-wheeler trucks and shit. I can't hardly hear you here, Mike. Yeah. Hey. So you were driving the car, and now was that your first time driving it when you wrecked it, or? No. What happened, dude? Let's show everybody what happened over here. Come on over here, Mike. Uh, driving it for a few weeks, but uh, I pulled out of our house, and I hit uh, one of our trailers. Uh-oh. Did you pop the clutch on accident, or what happened? I, uh, tight turn on the car. Thought uh -huh. I had it, and just yeah. scraped the side of it. Really right, right. fucked up this. Okay. 
Yeah, it ripped it up pretty hard, didn't it, buddy? Yeah. But we decided to go rat rod with this because, you know, that's actually the real real deal going on right now in the world of automobiles is hot rod, rat rod situation. I think you're going to have a badass ride one. Now, are you going to help Grandpa put the put the bumpers and all the hardware back on it and the lights and everything? Yeah, we're going to get that done probably today. Can I go ahead and nickname you uh, Big Hair Mike? There you go. Big Hair Mike, Don. Yeah. Huh? Sure. You know, you never, you'll never... You'll never be able to disguise that, bud. You know what I'm saying? Did you say you're getting a haircut today, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll dude. fix this up, then I'll go get a haircut in this. I don't know, dude. I think you ought to keep growing it, bud. Ah. Uh, this bitch is looking badass. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> okay, dude, so um, is this your first car, or, or you got another car to drive, or what? Uh, this would be... Uh, uh, yeah? We, we have another car that I was driving for a long time. Okay, okay. This is a uh, this is a step up, if you ask me. So are you going to be at the car show Sunday, or what's going on? Yeah, we'll take this over to the car show. Okay, the battery's dying out, bud. We got to go. All right. All right, big hair, Mike. See you guys on Mike, Sunday. All right, buddy. We'll see you at the car show, Don. We're gonna, you're going to be there, right? Piece of cake. Piece okay, of buddy. Cake. I'm going to bring my bug, so you better show up. All right. All right, we'll see you at the car show, Mike. Yeah. Keep that hair, dude. Buddy, keep it going. Okay. Kind of reminds me of old uh, plastic hair guy. That big old hair dude going on. Uh, we're going to the car show Sunday, so we'll see you there. Take it easy. Does that thing fit inside the car when you drive it, or you gotta put the top we, down we for that? The, we gotta keep the top down. <laughs> gotta keep the top down on that hairdo, huh? Elvis Presley or what? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Going with the afro. I hear that, bro. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.